Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome. So this is the first talk in the this track. And today, Friday, is the last day of the conference days. Um, just a reminder that uh, we have a sprint Saturday, Sunday. So if you want to to share, uh, collaborate with others, uh, uh, that's the best time. And if you want to host a sprint, there is a still time to do that. And um, also remember that tonight we are today we are starting late because this uh, Friday we are trying to get, to be a bit friendly with people in the Americas, so we are going to be finishing around 8 p.m. Uh, European time. So now the first talk uh, of in this track today, uh, I'm going to say hello to Gael and Francesco. Uh, hello, guys. How are you doing? Hey. Hello. Doing well. <laughs> I hope okay. I, I pronounce your name correctly. Is it Gael? Is that yeah? Right? That's uh, that's good. Cool. Perfect. Perfect. Where are you streaming from? I'm in Lausanne, Switzerland. Nice. I'm in Zurich. Cool. Nice. So yeah, thank you for being for for percent to percent here in Euro Python. Um, you know, speakers are super important. <laughs> Otherwise, we don't have a conference. Um, so Francesco and I, they are going to be presenting together and they are, they are going to talk about DARTs, unifying time series forecasting models from ARIMA to deep learning. Uh, I know she was ARIMA, but I'm sure you're going to explain that now. <laughs> so yeah. let's put uh, your screen. Yeah, perfect. perfect. Cool. So good luck and see you later. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Um, so let's jump uh, right into it. Thanks for, for attending this session. So we'll talk about time series forecasting and uh, we'll uh, show some examples using a library called darts, uh, which makes it easy to use like statistical method, but also more advanced deep learning methods for forecasting problem. So as you know, today I'm with uh, Francesco. Um, so he's a data scientist at Unitate and one of the main contributors to DARTS, and on my side also a data scientist at Unitate. And I work with time series in, in different industries like telecom, manufacturing, or, or energy. So maybe before we jump into uh, forecasting topics too quickly, let's maybe uh, first approach why we want to, we are interested in forecasting, why it is a, an important problem, and also maybe give a bit of context of, of why we develop DARTS and and how, why we think it's, it's helpful. So the first thing that you probably are aware is that time series are, are really everywhere. So time series, basically any data that can be displayed over some fixed time interval. And we can see a lot uh, through, I don't know, temperature, for example. Uh, if you have looking at website traffic or so network events, you also would get time series. One that would monitor, I don't know, brainwave in, in the brain, they would have EEG signal as time series. And in companies, you often see kind of sales figures that are also uh, time series. And this time series, they tell us about the past or maybe even until now. But uh, unfortunately, they don't necessarily uh, always tell us much about the future. And that's where forecasting can be a, a useful tool. So forecasting is trying to, based on the past data that we have, try to anticipate uh, what will happen and predict a bit more likely scenarios so that maybe we can take better decisions. For example, in the case of CO2 levels, if we can anticipate and see they are rising, try to maybe fix that and find a way to avoid global warming. That would be an example. But in the context of companies, it often appears like for predicting maybe a demand or a price for given products. That's a fairly typical scenario. And why uh, we are introducing darts? Um, so internally, we are work, we worked on a few, uh, quite a few time series forecasting problems, and we noticed that uh, although there are many uh, forecasting libraries in Python, they often are specialized within one uh, uh, topic. So you have, for example, uh, a stats model for statistical methods. Uh, then maybe you have some uh, profit uh, library for uh, for some from probabilistic forecasting some other specialized in deep learning. And it's hard when you're doing forecasting analysis to, to kind of combine these methods. It takes quite a bit of time. So that's why we build DARTs to, DART to try to unify the, 
building this model and have one interface to make it easy to use all these different approaches. As well, we uh, noticed that a lot of methods we're using were kind of, we were writing them again and again, um, like uh, to evaluate the performance of models. And so we built in a lot of uh, useful methods inside DARTS to, to make that easy and avoid uh, rewriting the, the same things uh, over and over. Um, DARTS was created internally in 2018. Um, last year, uh, one year ago, we released the first uh, public version of the open source project. And since then, we've added a lot of uh, features. We are now in version 09, which introduced like forecasting capability, uh, probabilistic forecasting capabilities. And uh, we plan to, to add even more features in, in the next months and, and years. So let's jump into uh, forecasting and we will walk through, through one example uh, of how you can uh, use, what are the basics of forecasting and also uh, how we can use DARS to kind of easily uh, um, apply it to your forecasting problems. So we're gonna use one example, which is the monthly uh, um, cow milk production. So the average uh, production of milk per cow and this data goes from the 1960s until uh, the end of the 1970s. And we have uh, the average per month. And we can see uh, here a uh, time series that is increasing and we can see some yearly as patterns that are repeating. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the data in black. So using that as a, a training data set to then create a, a forecast that will uh, hopefully approach as best as possible um, the data in blue that we have the true data. So in darts, we have one object uh, that is the time series object. And that's the main abstraction we have for working with time series. And that objects uh, allows you to easily import data from the different tabular format that you have in Python, uh, but also maybe do some processing on your time series. And uh, if you want to import data into darts, so you can uh, call this object, so from Dart's import time series. And then if you have uh, either a Pandas data frame or maybe some other uh, arrays, uh, you can then uh, use this time series object to import your data. So in our case here, that will be time series dot from data frame. And then there you will need to give three things. So first we have the data itself, DF, then uh, time series is uh, uh, some values over time. So you need to give uh, the column, which will be your, your time interval in our case months. And then uh, you have the value columns, which is in this case, the, the milk pounds uh, per cow uh, value. And then uh, from there you get your series object. Then um, what you always want to do in, in a forecasting problem is split your data into two sets. One that will be the training set where you're gonna try many models, many parameters, and then you have the validation that we'll use to just uh, benchmark the performance of the model. And you can do this easily by uh, using your series object that you have from before and then uh, call the method split before, which you can give either a date, in our case, 1973, or you can use also a fraction. So if you want to split maybe 70% of the data to be your training set. Once you, you've done that, we can start jumping into maybe the more interesting part and trying to apply some forecasting models uh, to, to our problem. So we're gonna use the training set and use some models to kind of train on that and then predict the rest of the interval uh, uh, using the model. So in darts, there are many models that are available uh, coming from different package like stats model, Facebook profit, but also some, some custom models that we developed. And you can import them using from darts.model import exponential smoothing in our case. And exponential smoothing is a model that uh, breaks down the time series uh, into uh, three aspects. One is the seasonality, one is the trend, and one is the, the level of the value. And it's a statistical method that will look at past value and then put a weight on the past value to infer these three values and recombine them at the end. And it uh, applies fairly well uh, to our, to our uh, problem because uh, since we have uh, a series with a trend, but also a seasonality, that model is able to capture uh, these different aspects uh, and restitute them. So the way then we can use this model in darts is we 
instantiate the model and put it in a variable. And then we use uh, the scikit-learn kind of fit and predict uh, approach where you can uh, fit uh, your model on the training data, so the, the first part, and then uh, predict a given interval. So in this case, we want to predict the whole, uh, the whole size of the blue uh, data uh, and get a forecast that is displayed here in blue. And that way you have generated a forecast uh, that you can uh, display and, and use for forecasting applications. But maybe during that step, we typically want to also try other models. And uh, similarly, you can import another model uh, that is the model theta. This one is a model that will uh, capture the seasonality and remove it from a time series, and then uh, fit two curves on the rest of the, of the data and the re residuals. Uh, and it has been fairly popular in recent years since it's performed well in some uh, forecasting competition some years ago. Um, and similarly to the exponential smoothing, we can apply the same steps, same steps import the model, uh, fit our training data, and then uh, predict uh, the given lengths that we want. And then we get a forecast here. Um, this model also has uh, some parameters. And you can, if you know a bit more what you want to do or how you want to forecast your problem, you can uh, specify these parameters uh, during this instantiation of the model. And in this case, there are three parameters here that you can specify. One is theta, and that will uh, tell the model how much it can kind of uh, uh, trend and follow the trend of the data. So a lower score, it's not following the trend much, and a higher score is following the trend more. And then you can also, if you know the seasonality of your time series, instead of having the model kind of infer it automatically, you can give it so you know that it's uh, captured the right seasonality. And then uh, the last um, parameter is the season mode, which um, you have trends that are can be either linear, so increasing by a fixed amount every year, or in some cases, if you uh, have like a, a percentage growth every year, it's going to be more of an exponential or a multiplicative season mode. And you can specify that here, which one you want to use. And then you apply the fit and predict like you, we did before. So now we had two models. And uh, we want to know kind of which one is better and which one we're going to use at the end for our forecasting application. Uh, and visually, it's it's kind of maybe a bit hard to, to tell exactly which one is better. So we see the exponential smoothing maybe as a larger error here in these lows, but kind of the peaks are maybe slightly better, whereas the theta is the opposite. Uh, but visually, it's hard to say. So to answer that question, we're going to use some some error metrics. And that also provides some uh, the standards error metrics that you, you would typically use. Um, so one of them is called uh, mean average percentage error, which kind of computes the difference between your forecast and the true value as a per percentage. And roughly, that gives you a percentage error of your forecast. And you can easily apply this to, to the data we have by importing the metrics. So from darts.metrics import MAP. And then uh, we can give it the validation, uh, which is the true value, and then the forecast we generated, and that will generate a score based on that. You have also uh, many other uh, metrics, but one that uh, is worth mentioning is the mean absolute uh, scaled error, which that one is uh, a, a metric that compares a naive forecast, so taking the previous value against the value you generate from your forecast. Uh, and it's also a fairly common used one. And here, uh, since it uses the previous value, you also need to give uh, the training set uh, as a parameter. But you can also easily generate the score as seen here. So if we do this to our two methods, uh, we can see that the mean average percentage error for the exponential smoothing is 3.4%, whereas for theta is 2.42%. So uh, we can see that theta, uh, according to this metric, is performing better. Uh, and probably that's the one we should use. So now we've uh, simulated uh, kind of an easy forecasting problem. But in practice, uh, typically, uh, we don't have one single interval where we just predict once the data. What happens in practice is that we will have a, a forecast running. So it will train on the data up until today, and then forecast kind of the next maybe few months in the future. 
But then in three months, uh, in the future, you, you're going to have more data uh, that you will use to train again the model and then predict the next three months and so on. So that approach um, is not captured here. And so this is kind of a simple, simplified uh, um, version of the real problem. But DALS provides some, um, some tools to kind of simulate a more realistic forecasting scenario. And these tools are called historical forecast and, and backtest. And they will simulate this kind of methods that I described where uh, we are retraining the model with the new data as time progresses and, and then generate new forecasts. So um, maybe a plot will help us uh, visualize a bit that approach. So I assume we, we are today and we have uh, in white all the historical data. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate being uh, in the past, maybe uh, at this start date here, and having only access to the data from before, and then generate uh, a forecast with a given horizon. So for example, the three or ne next six months. Um, and then from that, we can, uh, for example, get this forecast and compute a score on how well this forecast we generated here uh, performed. And then what we can do is we can kind of move this time point uh, in the past and generate a new forecast as we go. And then we kind of simulating this process with historical data of kind of retraining the model and producing new forecast, which is a more uh, kind of realistic scenario. So to do that, you have uh, your model uh, variable uh, that you define, and you can call the historical forecast method. Uh, this one will generate all the forecasts uh, for the, this, this uh, uh, intervals that you, you define. So what you need to give it is a series, so the, the series of, that you had before with all the data. Uh, here we're going to start at half. So sometimes if you're only, for example, training a model with very few data, it's not going to generate a good forecast model. So that's not a, a realistic scenario. So you, we're going to use at least 50% of the data to start training our model. And then we're going to predict the next 12 months. So here we can see, for example, in blue, the, the interval we're going to predict. And then every six months, we're going to retrain our model and do a, another prediction. So that's where you get all these colors. That's going to be all the historical forecasts you would have generated. So here we have the, the data of the forecast. Uh, but what we can do is use uh, instead the backtest methods, which is going to generate the same forecast but then use an error metric to kind of compute how each of these forecasts perform. So we have the same parameters that we had before, but in addition, we can give it a metric, in this case, the, the one we used before, the mean average percentage error. And then for each forecast, we're going to get one value of the error, and we can, for example, plot it as uh, an histogram. And that histogram is fairly useful to, to know maybe uh, are all our the errors kind of centered around a similar value, or maybe does the forecast sometimes generate very wrong uh, estimation? And in this case, you would see maybe a few spikes uh, far in the error. In some cases, that's something you want to, to avoid, uh, to avoid generating like two large errors, if then you, you are taking decisions on that data. Um, and finally, what you can also do is to the same backtest method, you can also give it uh, an aggregation. So instead of having different values for the forecast, you can aggregate them and take only the mean error. And that would uh, give you one score that evaluates kind of uh, your model on all the data and simulating this, this process. In this case, that would be uh, the blue line here, which is the mean error from all our forecasts. Um, so that's how you can evaluate your models. And now we can even go one step further and kind of use that uh, score uh, on historical data to maybe automatically find uh, the right parameters for the model. So typically, you're not really sure what are the optimal parameters. So you can kind of uh, have try many of them and then see how much uh, how well the forecast is, is performing. That is called some kind of, as is called hyperparameters uh, search. And uh, that's something you can use to, to maximize your accuracy. So DARS here, again, uh, gives uh, some easy method to, to do that. So what you can do, we can do it on the theta models that we had before. And I talked about these theta uh, um, parameters. And here we're going to give a few that we want to try, so from 0 0.5 to 3. 
And then we're also going to try different uh, seasonality mode, like the multiplicative one and additive one. Uh, so then you can call on the model, uh, the grid search method that will go through all the combination of these parameters. So maybe you should avoid giving too many of them, but, uh, uh, and then you can give uh, the same uh, parameters that we had before. So the training, the horizon and the starts, as well as the metric errors and then applying the fit and predict method, you can get uh, the best forecast out of all the parameter combination. So if we apply this to our model, then uh, at the beginning, we had the default theta methods uh, with theta equal to and uh, seasonality multiplicative, uh, and which yielded a 2.4% error roughly. And here, uh, Exploring all the combinations, it seems that theta equal equal three and additive mode is performing slightly better um, than a previous model, and maybe that's the one you would want to use in your forecasting applications. Uh, so I walked you through uh, uh, how like the basic of forecasting, and now Francesco is going to talk uh, about some more advanced uh, applications that you can do using darts, and I will leave him take over uh, the presentation. All right. Uh, thanks, Gail. Um, okay, so my... Okay, now it's up. Cool. Um, so thank you. Uh, so what Gail has presented you so far are really the core functionalities of darts. And in many cases, you can expect to get fairly good results by applying these sort of classical methods, such as exponential smoothing, uh, and theta in conjunction with proper model evaluation and selection procedures. So uh, what I'm gonna present to you in the next two sections are a bit more advanced features of darts that can help you get the most out of your data. And these are also fairly recent additions to the library. And the first one I would like to talk about is the possibility to train one model on multiple different time series. So, uh, let me introduce the concept of training a forecasting model in multiple different time series and its usefulness with an example. So this graph shows two time series, which do not overlap each other in the time dimension. On the left in black, you see uh, the monthly number of airplane passengers. And on the right in blue, you see the amount of milk produced per cow in pounds. So that's the time series you saw before. Uh, so now we want to create a prediction for the other time series. Um, however, we want to explore the possibility of also using the milk time series to get a better model performance by means of meta learning. So the idea is that although there is no direct causal relationship between the two time series, training on milk production might help the model to learn some general concepts about yearly seasonality combined with uh, upward trends, which it can apply to the air traffic prediction as well. So yeah, again, so that's the one we want to predict and we're just gonna use this sort of as additional training data. So let's try to do this in Dart. So the model we're gonna use is NBeats, which is a powerful model which produced state-of-the-art results on the M4 competition data set, which is a big time series data set. Uh, at least it, it did produce state-of-the-art when it was uh, first made public. So NBeats is actually part of the collection of deep learning forecasting models in Darts, uh, which we implement in PyTorch. So first, as a baseline, let's simply train our model on only the air traffic data. And doing this, we can achieve a reasonable performance with a mean average percentage error of roughly 9%. Now, let's slightly adapt the code from before and train our model not only on the air traffic data, but also on the milk production time series. So we have to change two things for this. On the second line, we need to include the milk time series in our training set. So we go from just passing one single time series to passing a list of two time series. And then in the third line, we need to specify the input time series to the model before creating the prediction, because otherwise the model cannot know which time series to forecast. And um, as you can see, the result is a significantly more accurate prediction. Now, how could this be? And uh, again, this is an example of meta-learning. So fitting a model on a different but similar 
time series helps it to learn general properties of the time series that it is predicting. Of course, this is a very simple example, but there are many such cases where meta learning can be useful. For example, uh, imagine sales of different products. Uh, you could train on many different time series when just wanting to predict one or uh, energy consumption of different households, etc. So again, those would be different time series, but they could share important common properties. So the DARS library provides all the tools needed to perform meta learning with highly powerful deep learning models, all the while providing a very clear and simple abstraction to the user. Now, let's move on to the next feature of DARTS that is a fairly recent addition as well, namely probabilistic forecasting. And before we go into what exactly probabilistic forecasts are and how we create them, let me first try to answer the question of why we need them in the first place. In other words, what's wrong with the forecasts we have seen so far? And um, so to see why normal so-called point predictions might be insufficient, let's consider the following time series as an example. So on the left in black, we have a, uh, or I mean, just in general, we have a time series with a clear seasonal component that should not be too hard to predict. Uh, on the other hand, our time series also contains noise. And this noise component is not the same across the whole time series. In fact, its strength uh, is oscillating as well. So this lower time series just indicates the fluctuations of the noise intensity over time. So this is an artificial time series, but I think it will help us to sort of understand the usefulness of uh, probabilistic forecasting. So let's say we want to create a forecast for the validation set in blue. How would we approach this? One of the simplest ways to forecast would be to use one of the naive baseline models of darts. And in this case, that would be the naive seasonal model. So this model accepts a seasonal period and when forecasting simply repeats the last observed value that was at the same point in the cycle. And uh, as you can see, we can create a prediction in three short lines of code, given that we know the seasonality period of the time series. But as you can see too, uh, this is not a very good result. The problem is that the model simply repeats the noise it saw before. So let's try a, a more sophisticated model that is able to separate signal from noise. And for this, we use ARIMA, which is autoregressive integrated moving average. So another sort of classical statistical method for time series forecasting. And as you can see, it fairly successfully predicts the signal and disregards the noise. So what's wrong with this forecast? Why do we need more than this? Well, the problem here is that not all forecasts you see in blue are equal. For example, consider this forecast. Um, you can consider this a safe forecast because the noise component is weak at this point in time. However, if we look at this forecast right here, it is much more likely that it will deviate from the ground truth since the noise component is very strong here. Now, of course, this is obvious to us since we see both the forecast in blue and the ground truth in black, but in a real world scenario, uh, you would only see the blue line and you would have no idea that one forecast is a much safer bet than the other. So let's try out one of the probabilistic forecasting models that DARTS offers. Uh, in this case, we use the TCN model, which is uh, another one of our deep learning models that we offer. And we use it in its probabilistic form. And you can see that we use it in its probabilistic form because we pass a likelihood model uh, to it when instantiating it. And uh, I don't wanna go too deep into this right now. We uh, unfortunately don't have the time, uh, but just know that this, we're basically instantiating a probabilistic version of a deep learning model here. And again, with only a few lines of code, we can create a prediction. And you can see that the result does not just consist of a point prediction at every point in time, but also a confidence interval, which quantifies the uncertainty of every forecast. So here we can see that the model correctly identifies regions of high noise as uncertain while presenting other predictions with very tight confidence intervals. Uh, so now that we have seen sort of by means of an example, why probabilistic forecasts are important, uh, let's take a step back and briefly just on a high level, talk about the idea of how DARS produces probabilistic forecasts. So how do probabilistic forecasts 
differ from their deterministic counterparts. So just to recap here on top, you see a deterministic model. It takes as an input a time series, uh, possibly, you know, multivariate. It can include covariates too. Uh, so it just means that it can have many dimensions instead of the, just the univariate case you saw before. Uh, and it also outputs a time series of point predictions. Uh, mo a probabilistic model, on the other hand, does not directly produce a time series of predictions as a result. Instead, it outputs parameters of a given probability distribution. And using these parameters, we can obtain an arbitrary number of so-called sample predictions. So let's zoom in on the probabilistic forecasting case. So we can create a big number of samples uh, out of these parameters, uh, each of which is as long as the prediction of a deterministic model would be. And actually combined, these samples constitute a probabilistic time series in darts. And the user does not explicitly have to deal uh, with these individual samples. All of that is abstracted away by the darts time series class. Uh, all the user has to do is, to get a probabilistic forecast is to say how many samples they want to predict. So after a probabilistic forecast is produced, the user can decide how to best evaluate it. And one of the most straightforward ways to do so is to plot and evaluate different quantiles, uh, which can be used as confidence intervals. And as you can see, it is very easy to plot confidence intervals in darts um, just using the time series plot method. And all you have to do is uh, just to have a bit more control here, you can uh, define the upper and lower quantiles to sort of decide how wide your confidence interval would be. And now, uh, so we looked at a sort of example before, but it was an artificial example. So maybe let's just briefly look at a real world case of where we could produce a probabilistic forecast. So here we have a time series of the daily average energy production of a hydro power plant. And uh, this time series is quite structured with a monthly seasonality. And uh, looking more closely, we have monthly spikes that have quite predictable shapes, uh, especially if you have observed the previous ones. Uh, and between the spikes, on the other hand, the values are a bit less predictable. So let's try to train a simple darts RNN model. So this would be another uh, deep learning model that also supports probabilistic forecasts. And um, so we, we again are going to instantiate in its probabilistic form by passing to it a Gaussian likelihood model. And uh, when fitting the model, we also provide covariates. But uh, let's not talk about this too much here because um, we don't really have the time. So we're also not showing how these covariates are created. Um, but DARTS provides very easy to use utility functions to create covariate time series. But please, I encourage you to check out our documentation to find out more about that. Uh, also, when creating a prediction, we specify, as you can see in the last line, the num samples parameter. Uh, in the call to, yeah, again, in the call to the predict function, which will give us a probabilistic forecast. And uh, with this code, we get the following 100 day forecast. And as you can see, the model roughly captures the general pattern of the data. Moreover, it expresses increased uncertainty for the sections that are harder to predict. And if we compare this to the actual data, uh, we can see that the parts of the data where the model made the biggest mistakes are also the parts where it expressed the biggest uncertainty. So if we have a probabilistic prediction like this, we can sort of gauge how much we can trust the forecast. And as a result, how much action we should take based on the predictions. So I realize that, again, you know, many details uh, I haven't really told you about. Again, the likelihood models. But again, um, please feel free to check out our documentation here. So in this example with energy production, uh, so this this is just one example. You, you could imagine, you know, countless other cases of where uh, probabilistic forecasts might be useful. You know, for example, let's say you run a website and you want to make sure that your infrastructure supports the web traffic to your site. You know, there might be days of the week or times of the day where traffic is less predictable than at other times. And a probabilistic forecasting model might be able to predict those uncertainties. And given a probabilistic forecast, you could make sure that you allocate enough resources to make sure your site does not get overwhelmed during times of uh, high uncertainty. Um, okay, so uh, before we wrap up this presentation, I would just quickly uh, 
like to give you a brief summary of sort of the whole darts toolbox uh, i'll just have to check the okay 10 minutes left um so we presented a few of the most important features in the previous slides but we definitely did not cover everything that darts has to offer so the heart and soul of darts is for sure uh, the forecasting capabilities. So some of them you encountered during this presentation, such as uh, statistical models. We saw applications of exponential smoothing in ARIMA, for instance. Um, we made use of some deep learning models as well, such as NBEATS and the TCN. We also outlined the main ideas concerning probabilistic forecasting and also training on multiple time series for meta learning. Uh, but there are quite a few forecasting sort of tools we didn't mention, for instance, you can also make use of assembling models to easily combine any number of forecasting models into one, uh, allowing you to sort of, um, you know, make up for the weaknesses of one model with another model, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, on a very high level. Um, we also support many different kinds of uh, time series types. So in this presentation, we mostly looked at univariate time series without covariates. But we also support multivariate time series and covariate time series. So again, I repeat myself, but please check out our documentation and example notebooks too. We have a lot of them and um, there should be a lot of information. So in addition to forecasting, Darts also provides tools for everything that's important before, in between, and uh, after forecasts. So when it comes to the first stages of solving forecasting problems, uh, Darts offers a variety of tools for analyzing the raw time series data as well. So, you know, you have sort of data exploration uh, tools, you know, you have functions for computing important statistics such as autocorrelation and various other tools for plotting and visualizing relevant information. And, you know, after this initial analysis, usually there is a need for pre-processing before feeding the data to the models. And here we also provide many functionalities such as uh, say, interpolation of missing values, scaling and normalization utilities, and also seasonality and trend removal options. So, of course, um, uh, after you sort of prepare your data and you create a forecast, the story doesn't end there. You'll want to evaluate them in a rigorous manner to select the best type of model for the problem you're trying to solve. And you use things like historical forecasts, backtesting grid search, all of which Gail has introduced in the first part of the presentation. Uh, but there are also other functionalities used uh, for evaluating forecasts that we didn't have the time to discuss, such as uh, residual analysis, for example. Uh, all in all, I would really say this is by far one of the most comprehensive libraries for time series forecasting in general, uh, not just in Python. Uh, but of course, we are constantly working towards making it better. And uh, contributions, uh, suggestions, but also criticism, uh, they're very welcome. And um, for this, you know, so you please try out darts uh, to sort of get a feel for it. Um, if that's something that could be useful to you, so you can simply install it using pip and uh, check out our GitHub. Please uh, also check out our blog post if you're interested. And again, if you have any suggestions or any other comments, uh, feel free to send us an email as well. And uh, yeah, with this, um, I'd like to finish things and uh, thanks a lot for your attention. And I guess we can take questions now. Okay, thank you guys. That was a, that was a really nice talk. Um, we have a lot of questions. So I'm going to mention, so we have five minutes. So let's see how much we can do in five minutes. And then uh, you can take the rest in the, in the breakout rooms. So let's go to the first one. Yeah, so people want to know if those darts integrate into the SK learn ecosystem. Um, okay, so if it's okay, I will answer this one. Um, I would say rather than darts integrating into the SK learn ecosystem, I would say parts of SK learn integrate into the darts ecosystem, as in. Um, I mentioned that we have assembling models and one way to assemble predictions of different forecasting models is to actually use regression on these forecasts. And for this, we are really open to accept sort of um, SK learn regression models um, to sort of enhance our existing forecasting capabilities. However, do we 
specifically have we specifically developed something to to be more compatible with sk learn not quite not quite so this might be something we will do in the future but uh i can't tell you much more about that yet okay so next question is this one does start support enforcing known constraints for example any of shoes sold can be less than zero that's a that's a very good question and we don't have this across the board right now so we what we i i would say no we we have not implemented this feature yet and that's a very good point okay so next one about meta learning can we impose a dag i don't know what's that uh to represent castle links so um definitely this would also be an advanced feature that we have not tackled yet um so dag meaning uh direct directed acyclic graph um no we have not and uh i mean would definitely be very interesting but uh that would be a very advanced feature that that's not included in darts yet. yeah i think okay. it's something uh yeah it is integrating it would be complicated but maybe worse yet uh, we'll have to okay. see the icy one. How did you create the plus we got to see on the slides? <laughs> so from the series objects, you can call plot, which uh, often returns a, a pretty good already plot. And then it's based on Matplotlib, so you can uh, add uh, extra features if you want, uh, the same way you would do for, for any Matplotlib plot, so customizing uh, the legends or titles and, and all these, uh, these aspects. So this can be easily done from the time series object. Okay, cool. So I think we have time for two more. Uh, I think this one is an easy one. So I noticed that darts include profits. Are there any plans to support great kite also? Sorry, I I mean I don't have uh, too much knowledge of great kite, uh, yeah, so no. I, I can't really. <laughs> you need on. Okay. But we will check it out. Uh, thanks for mentioning. You can you can have a chat in Matrix about that then. <laughs> so I think let's say this is oh we have time so we can. Do. So the original M bits is unvariety. Did you implement my multivariety version? Yeah, so that's correct. Uh, it would be univariate the original version. We have sort of adapted it to also support multivariate time series, but. Um, I would say we didn't really look deep into the architecture to sort of optimize it for it. So, yes, you can use it for multivariate predictions, but um, it's it was sort of an ad hoc adaptation that we did. Okay, so one more, and this is the last one. Can you please briefly explain what kind of meta features are used to adapt the new data? Okay, so I suppose this uh, addresses meta learning. And so um, if, if, if your question regards the, oh, you know, what kind of features in the data um, is our models picking up when, you know, learning on multiple time series, then I suppose, you know, those can be basic things like trends and seasonalities. Uh, but I, I I'm afraid I, I can't tell you much more about that. Um, That's okay. I'm not sure I understand the question completely. Yeah, so that, that was a question from Saijan or Saiyan. Uh, maybe he can uh, ask you later in the chat. So yeah, yeah. thank you very much. That was a nice talk. Uh, the next talk is a keynote. So if people is here, you have to move to the Optiver track to see the, the keynote. And you can find Gael and Francesco in the breakout rooms. Uh, and I will copy paste all the questions there so they can reply later. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being here in Europe. Thanks for having Enjoy us. Enjoy the rest yeah. of the conference. Thank you for Cheers. hosting the session. Bye-bye. Thanks.